All of the paintings you see me lay out on the floor have at least two things in common. One of them being that I find them unsuccessful in one way or another. Not necessarily in the sense that they are all particularly badly painted or that they didn't turn out how I wanted, but rather in the sense that I gain absolutely no inspiration from them. I feel very detached from them and I also just have no desire to continue with the ones that might be unfinished. To me they all just seem like dead in paintings. The second thing they have in common is that they were all painted during the same period, namely between November 2020 and February 2021. The topic that I want to talk about in this video today surrounds the same period and I will address the fact that there might be a connection between these, in my opinion, unsuccessful painting and this topic. So while I brutally paint over these six paintings in order to transform them into something new, I am going to give you a bit of context. Before that, however, we need to go back a couple of years. Twelve years ago, my mom showed me this app she had just downloaded on her new iPhone. Not having an iPhone or any kind of smartphone for that matter myself, I would oftentimes kidnap her phone to use its super cool features such as the back then very impressive camera. And now with this app that she just downloaded, it gave me the possibility to become even more explorative with this inbuilt camera. The app had a collection of filters that seemed magical as they could transform my pictures into little squared artworks. Some images turned into captures of interior, some were experimental self-portraits and some became more or less abstract, playful tryouts with light. I would experiment with all the filters, posting all of them at once, not once considering by any means the fact that this app was actually a social media platform. I didn't look at the ability to leave likes and comments under the photo that I posted. In fact, I remember finding it rather annoying that I had to publish the photos in order to save them. I had no interest in these so-called followers. I was simply enjoying the platform's creative outlet. In all honesty, I think this was the only moment this app called Instagram was truly a creative platform. Cut to July 2021, which should be the moment where I deactivated my own Instagram profile after roughly 10 years on the app myself. And I want to talk about how this decision quite literally saved my relationship to art whether in regards to my art practice, to look at art and to discover art, or basically to be part of the art world in general. It might sound dramatic, but when you consider to what extent the impact of social media has had, especially in the two years of the pandemic with lockdowns and isolations, I think it might actually be a reasonable assumption. And I think the pandemic is also a great way to leap into this moment I talked about in the beginning. In September 2020, I graduated from the Art Academy with a bachelor's degree in Fine Arts. The graduation show was intense to say the least and luckily took place during a moment in which almost all Covid restrictions were relaxed in the Netherlands. However, meanwhile we got to experience a buzzing, crowded and very festive graduation period, the country would start to close down one week after the ending of the show. It was the beginning of the very long second lockdown in the Netherlands, which took place roughly between September 2020 and May 2021, in which the winter months were the most strict with regards to the measurements. I don't want to go into detail with these situations, as most of us probably can recall quite vividly this never-ending and very lonely period. With museums and galleries closing down and shows being postponed or cancelled, this was obviously not an ideal moment to graduate into. And meanwhile some of my peers managed this better, I had a what you can call quite slow start. I loved and I still do love my graduation exhibition with all my heart and I feel really proud about what I did. Still, I can quite frankly admit that it didn't reach the public success that I might have hoped for. And when thinking that this show, the graduation show, would be the one and only opportunity to show my work for the professional art world, a confusion mixed with frustration was slowly starting to grow in me. 
With the world closing down week by week, I turned more and more to Instagram during these months, as it seemingly started to become the only place for making my art public. I therefore started taking my quote Instagram game very seriously. I would for instance clean out my list of pages I followed to have a strictly contemporary art related feed. Because it felt as if this art world that I was not able to reach in the physical space was somehow reachable online and particularly on Instagram. And it was in a way true. The many art platforms that were forced to close their physical spaces also upped their own Instagram games <laughs> for sharing their art programs. I have never been a spontaneous Instagram poster, but my rigidness with my own content started becoming more apparent. It would take me weeks to decide whether to post or not to post something, making sure that this image would completely align with the story I had narrated on my own account. As it was a very particular narration I wanted to show there, and a lot of the things I created I didn't consider to be good enough for my selective feed. My art became very different from what I had been making in my last year of the Art Academy. It became quite small and figurative, in huge contrast to the series of paintings that I presented for my graduation. I think there are several reasons for this change. One being that I needed to find ground in my new situation as a professional artist. I needed to make my own schedule now, as no teacher would consult me and guide me, and no nerve-wracking assessment would be around the corner. I was suddenly my own strictest teacher. I think that I sort of found comfort in making these lesser conceptual and less abstract works. It was some kind of autopilot mode, just to make me keep working, as I feared that to stop making art altogether would result in me failing as an artist. Which of course is completely untrue, but unfortunately a very typical mindset for a newly graduated artist. But with regards to why my painting started looking more, in my own words, safe, I also think that Instagram influenced me here. Being my only source of inspiration these months, I gravitated towards artworks that would look good in this digital platform. Even if I often find myself more drawn to the conceptual and abstract expanded painting installations in the physical space, this is way harder to grasp in a little digital square than, for instance, a framed figurative painting. I eventually began questioning my role as a painter a lot, starting to doubt my conceptual abilities and whether I was able to legitimize my theories with my work. It led me to consider that my more classical painting abilities were the only tools that I could count on, which I know sounds absolutely stupid, but it was sort of how I felt these months. By the way, in January 21, I wrote an article which also addresses these confusing months of leaping into the professional art world quite well, so if you want to read it, I linked it down below in the description. During the spring of 2021, I slowly began growing more bold in my painting practice once again, and some of these paintings I made during this time I'm actually quite proud of. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I moved into a lovely studio collective and simply the experience of working among other artists is extremely valuable and inspiring to me. Unfortunately we got evicted from the building we were in half a year after I moved in so I had to move out again. But it was overall a good moment for my artistic development. But the Instagram still had an increasingly tighter grip in my way of thinking and acting as an artist online. Constantly being extremely rigid with my posting and taking every little action into account. I would start caring more and more about the follower number, keeping a close eye on who followed me and also who stopped following me. I would actually like random posts in the hope that this profile would follow me and whenever that didn't happen it felt like a letdown. It was exhausting to say the least and absolutely self-destructive to allow this follower number so much headspace. So now we are arriving at July 2021, I was going to Denmark for a long period because I would be teaching kids in the summer art school. The place I was teaching was lovely and my time there was fantastic, but at the same time I was absolutely stressed because I couldn't update my rigidly curated Instagram. 
There was simply no possibility for me to publish any new art, as I wasn't able to make any art. I think I had been there for around one week when I decided to deactivate my account, so I didn't have to let this issue fill my head. To begin with, this deactivation was supposed to be temporary. My plan was that I would reactivate it once I was back in the Netherlands a month later. However, I instantly realized how I didn't miss this app at all and how I had absolutely no desire to go back again. Strangely, this app that had taken so much space in my head suddenly meant absolutely nothing. And so, here we are, one year and three months later, and I haven't looked back into the account one single time. Being without an Instagram for more than a year has been strange. I quickly got to feel how detached you can be from your friends when you are not on the arguably most used social media platform of my age group. And I will also say that the first few months, especially when I returned to the Netherlands, was quite rough. I didn't have any desire to paint and I actually didn't touch a canvas for half a year, which really started to frustrate me and also once again made me doubt myself as an artist. But around December 21 I started painting again and I got completely absorbed in it. I had so much motivation to make crazy compositions, to experiment with my material, to make once again fluffy canvases and to place them in weird position. And meanwhile I was experiencing this newfound overwhelming happiness in painting, I didn't share it with anyone. Well, of course, besides my boyfriend and my parents. I wasn't painting for a specific platform anymore, for the sole reason of sharing with others to gain respect in terms of likes and followers. I made paintings only for myself, purely because I loved to do it and because I couldn't stop. One finished painting immediately generated five new ideas for new paintings. It made me realize that the gap of not painting was needed in the sense that I had to find back this passion for making art and to let go of a corrupted mindset that Instagram had given me. A mindset which had grown into an unhealthy dimension during the lockdown years. A mindset in which I was constantly aware of my online presence, ultimately making my motivation for painting based on this online presence. This is why I don't think I can ever go back to Instagram. I know that by taking this choice I am missing out on a lot of promotional and social benefits of the art world, but if I want to take my artist career seriously, I have to value my artistic development over my social media presence. And that is just one reason for taking this decision, because I haven't even mentioned all of the ways that my mental well-being has improved during this past year but that would be a topic for a different video. I have also come to terms with the fact that I am particularly sensitive to the online behavioral patterns of social media. I cannot tell whether I am more or less than others, of course, but at least I am aware of its impact on myself and hence also very aware that having started a YouTube could potentially lead me back into a similar corrupted mindset. So I'm trying to have this in mind when managing this YouTube channel and producing these videos. That's it. While not having too much experience yet, I already prefer the YouTube format far more than the Instagram format, especially because of the completely different attention span that it allows for and how it kind of highlights the process rather than the result. I have been looking for ways in which I could combine the sharing of my artistic practice with my desire to communicate of some sorts, and so far YouTube seems to be a very good place for this. I will go further into this comparison of the two social media platforms in my next video, because I decided to split up this video in two parts. So whereas this first part has been about my own personal story, the second part will address more generally the issues with Instagram influencing and ultimately polluting an artistic development. So if you are interested in hearing this and of course also follow the continuation of working with the remaining canvases, stay tuned. I have quite a funny idea for all these little canvases and I have no idea how it's going to end up looking.
I hope to be back with the second part in a few weeks. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch me paint and listen to what I had to say. I'm curious if some of the experiences I had resonates with some of you, or if you cannot recognize these feelings at all. In the end we all handle the pressure of social media differently, but I certainly don't think we can take its impact for granted.